That was a lot of wonderful, wonderful scripture. And, and when I started looking at the text, um, for me, I, you know, it's hard to pare it down sometimes when there's really a lot, a lot in our text. But this morning, the Lord put it upon me to really preach from John uh, 12, 24. Um, so the message is entitled, The Secret to Life. You know, friends, today I'm going to share with you the secret of life. You may already know what I'm going to, going to tell you, though you may not have thought of it as the secret to life. It's something you've seen and experienced over and over. It's one of those secrets hidden in plain sight. It's also one of those secrets that can trouble the soul, so we often turn away from it and close our eyes to it. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. That's John 12, 24. And then I like this version from the New Living Translation. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone, but its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. So there you have it. Now you know, this is the secret to life. You know, it's the pattern of loss and renewal that runs throughout our lives and our world. Even if you've never thought of it as the secret of life, you've lived it and experienced it, sometimes by choice and other times by chance. Either way, it's there. Look at the way this pattern is present in your life. Have you ever fallen in love and committed your life to another? Well, we saw that yesterday at the wedding. If so, you have had to, put, to let parts of your old life go and something of your single life died so that you could be with that other person. How about parenting? If you are a parent, you know that there are sacrifices of yourself and your life to be made in order for the new life of your child to emerge and grow. We give up parts of ourselves for the other. Parents are continually letting go of their child so she or he can grow up. Have you ever been a caretaker of another? If so, you could name the parts of your life that dies so that another might live with dignity, compassion, and love. What are the costs, the losses you paid for an education or a career? You chose certain losses and let go of some things so that the other things could arise. For every choice we make, every yes we say, there's at least one no, and probably really many no's. I used to hear that, Debbie. So if you say yes to this, you're saying no to something else. But that doesn't always mean that's a negative. It can sometimes be a really positive thing. This is the same pattern in nature. You can see it in the changing of the seasons. We're seeing it now, falling leaves and new blooms and the setting and the rising of the sun. Think about the scriptural stories of loss and renewal. The innocence of Adam and Eve died so that consciousness might be born. I don't know if we've thought about it that way in Genesis. The innocence of Adam and Eve died so that consciousness could be born. Abram left his country and kindred so that he might be made a great nation, renamed Abraham, and be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Jacob, Jacob lost his old identity and was wounded so that he could become a new man, Israel with a new life. And recently we learned about James and John. They left their father, boats, and nets to become disciples of Jesus and fishers of men. Jesus taught his disciples, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days later, being killed, he will rise again. The secret is out. It's everywhere. It's a pattern of loss and renewal, dying and rising, letting go and getting back getting back, giving back, leaving and return, it's at the core of our baptism. And it is what we declare every single Sunday when we take communion together. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ
Christ will come again. So friends, what in your life do you need to let go of today? What might you need to leave behind? What needs to die so that something new can rise? I don't think it's a coincidence that today's gospel, John 12, 20 through 33, is set in the context of the Passover feast. Remember what that's about. The Passover is the celebration of the Israelites' liberation from bondage in Egypt. It's about freedom, a new life. It's about letting go, leaving behind and moving into a new life. I hate to think of what it would have been like if they were left in the desert and there was no exodus. There's something about this pattern that is the lens through which we see Jesus. Some Greeks came to Philip and said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. I don't know why they want to see Jesus, but I have a few guesses. You know, Jesus turned what? Water into wine. He cleansed the temple. He healed the son of the royal official. He healed the paralytic. He fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and a couple of fishes. That's amazing. He walked on water. He gave sight to the man born blind and he raised Lazarus from the dead. Just a few of his things that he did. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Well, I say, me too. That's the Jesus I want to see. Do you? I hope you do. Philip tells Andrew about the Greeks and their request. Philip and Andrew tell Jesus, and Jesus says to them, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That's his response to those who want to see him, to the Greeks, to you, and to me. And you've got to know that dying is about more than our physical death. Yes, it is that, but it's also more than that. We die a thousand deaths throughout our lifetime. The loss of a loved one, a relationship, our health, maybe some opportunities, a dream, all deaths we didn't ask for or maybe even want. And other times we choose our losses and deaths. We give up parts of ourselves for another. We change our beliefs and values so we can be more authentically ourselves. And sometimes there are things we need to let go of, things we cling to that deny us the fullness of the life we want and God offers. Maybe it's fear, anger, or resentment, regret, and disappointment, guilt, the need to be right, or the approval of others. You know, friends, seeing Jesus is not a spectator sport. It is a way to be followed, a truth to be embodied, a life to be lived. It is being a grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies so that it might bear much fruit. That's where we see him. It's letting go, the empty, the leaving behind, and the dying that makes space for the new life to arise. You've probably had at least one time in your life that when you look back on it, you say, wow, I never want to go through that again. But on the other hand, you say, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. A time where you were tested and tried at the end of your rope or at the end of you. What's that time for you? What happened? You know, maybe it was the time when you were trying to do much of what you wanted to do for God by yourself. Your motives were right, your heart was right, your plans were made with prayer. Sounds good, right? But the problem is that we sometimes end up doing everything except the crucial things. We are not willing to die. Our identity gets involved in pulling off our plans. Our hopes and our feelings about Christian service get tangled up in the success of those plans. And you know what, Jesus reminds us that there is no harvest without death. The seed has to be planted and die before it can germinate and grow. Jesus submitted everything. Jesus submitted everything, including his fears, his friends, to the will of God. And friends, it cost him. It cost him his life. It won him the harvest. What have you not surrendered to God? And why? You know, our Father wants the best for each one of us. 
Sometimes it's difficult and even painful on our quest to change. I know I've experienced that. But in that experience or experiences, we can bear fruit. He wants our lives to be changed and renewed. You know, friends, look back and you can probably see that it was in one of those times when you were the grain of wheat that fell into the earth and died. And if you look back, I'll bet it was one of those times when you knew you had, you had seen Jesus. Because maybe when you're in it, you don't see Jesus. But as we look back, we know that Jesus was there. Maybe when you experienced the holy, when you were absolutely convinced that God was present and working in your life. Because friends, he's present and working in your life every moment of every day. You know, I've had those times. Times of trying to do too much for God by myself, on my own power and not his. Believing that my motives and plans were right and aligned with his. I was involved in an apostolic movement called Lutheran Presio of Southern California for over 14 years. Presio is a three-day retreat, and the word Presio, when translated from its Spanish origin, means short course in Christianity or Christian living. And it is similar to Via de Cristo, um, Walk to Emmaus, or Tres Dias. So maybe you've heard something about those, and I know some people here have served in those movements. It was a place where we obtained tools and learned how to use those tools in the places where we were called to lead in our churches. But I also saw those tools used in, the work, in workplaces and in our homes too. Well, I served on the board or the secretariat for five years and served on over 30 weekends in those 14 years. I also used my gift of sewing for, uh, my, my gift of love for sewing to embellish aprons, make Bible covers and all kinds of things on many of those weekends, whether I was called to work or not. But you know what, friends, at some point, and I can't tell you when it was, at some point, my motives I realized my motives for what I was doing may have not been pure. I may have started doing it for all the right reasons, but somewhere those reasons changed and they muddied the waters of my identity in Christ. God was giving me messages all along the way and I refused to see them. Maybe you've had that experience. The messages came through different means like people, the wear and tear on my body, and even our, our family finances. But you know, God guided me to let go of Luther Curcio and all that went with it in 2014. So I did. And I'm going to tell you, it wasn't an easy task, and it was even a painful one. God was calling me to die to the old way of being, to the places that were more flesh-driven and not God-driven. But you know, as I gave up Lutheran Persia, as I died to self, it thrust me into a new way of being, a new way of life. I began to see that the trappings of the old held me down, and I wasn't able to do what God really wanted me to do. He was asking me to pare down my life. Attending Lutheran Seminary was on the horizon, and that and my family would be all-consuming. But I want to say this, that I am so grateful for my time in Presio. I met some of my dearest friends during my time of service there. And everything that I learned and gained in those 14 years in Presio came alive in a more powerful way as I was transformed from the person who embellished aprons to the woman who stands before you as a pastor. This was my grain of wheat that had to fall to the earth and die so a harvest could take place. So what is it that you keep doing that's holding you back from doing what you need to do for the kingdom of God? It can appear as a ball and chain around your ankle. It's a habit. It is draining the life out of you. What is God asking you to let go of today, friends? Maybe it's allowing your shyness to die so you can become a teacher. Maybe it is the death of a marriage or a relationship so you can become stronger in yourself and undo yourself. Maybe it is the all-consuming worry about your finances. Whatever it may be, 
the evidence of the pain of the dying seed and the new that emerges to bless the kingdom friends it's going to bear fruit just as god has reshaped my life he will reshape yours too i've learned so much about myself in these last seven years as i have been reshaped and reformed more positive things have emerged that benefit the kingdom my relationship with God and my relationship with my family and others has flourished. And I know that I have seen Jesus all along the way. He's loved me and guided me through all those times of letting go of Debbie Taylor's agenda and grasping onto his. And I want to say even in these seven months, but it's really been longer than seven months, but seven months as your pastor, I feel like I have been shaped I'm continually being shaped and reformed and I'm so grateful for that so grateful for your love and your encouragement and that's what God calls us to do too is to love and encourage each other but he also calls us to let go but I want to say this in letting go friends it doesn't mean rejection by walking away and it what it does mean is choosing and it doesn't mean choosing absence over presence because when we leave one situation, of course we're absent, but it, it causes us to be present somewhere else. Instead, letting go is what allows us to be more authentically present to ourselves and others. It makes room for a new life and new ways of being present to arise. Our letting go gives God something with which to work. Why then would we continue to cling to live as an isolated, self-enclosed, single grain of wheat? This is the sole troubling secret to life. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain of wheat in your lives today that needs to fall into the earth and die. What is it? What is it, friends? Do you want to continue to be that single grain of wheat? Or do you want to bear fruit? So what are the things that if you lost them, you are sure you would just die? I'm pretty sure we could have a list of that. Gosh, if I lost this or that or even a relationship. And honest to goodness, when I really felt like I, the Lord was telling me to give up for CO, I had lots of friends there and I thought, how in the world am I going to do it? Well, friends, with God, all things are possible. So again, I'm going to ask this, what are the things that if you lost them, you are sure, you are sure you would just die? Maybe those are the very places waiting to bear much fruit in your life. Maybe that's where you'll see Jesus. You know, friends, this secret, this pattern of loss and renewal will be unveiled every day throughout Holy Week. It's our preparation for Holy Week. And you know where Holy Week ends, right? At Easter, the empty tomb, the dawn of a new day, and the renewal of life. The single grain of wheat, friends, becomes the bread of life. Amen. Amen.